Hey guys, Gameboy3D Hunter here. Once again, we're back in Forza Horizon 5, still with the Mustang as the fast car to beat. It has been here for like 10 episodes. It's insane. It is time to change that. A 127.33. It is an insane time to beat. But we had got to Plymouth, and then... GM is going to fire back with the Pontiacs. Look at that torque numbers. <laughs> they are pretty insane, but these are heavy cars. The Fury is going to be the lightest car that we run out of these next few episodes. So, hmm. Six liter V8 in the Fury. It's an older car. So, I think it'll have an actually higher revving engine. Because as the engines got bigger, they rev lower. This track seems to like high revving engines. So maybe it's not going to do as bad as you think. No race brakes, but we should be good to go. We are supercharged or turbocharged. Turbocharged. Those are some big whooshes. This car's handling really good, actually. Hold on. Okay, those go a little bit wide. But it is a wider car than the Bel Airs that we've had before. The Bel Airs felt stable, but they just neutral steered wide. Will this be the same? Maybe. It's a pretty wide car. It's right being a similar body style. Will we have the speed though? We've seen big boy cars like this not do great for speed. Maybe it'll be similar in time to the 60s Impala that stood for a while. But not for the Hemi there. 110 is slightly below average. Cross that jump. I do like the way this car is handling so far. I think it's more ideal to shift right before I hit the water there. How fast do we go? Pretty good, actually. I need to be better with the brakes on that part of the track, or at least go in wider. And I cannot take that tight line that I want. I do still have some sliding problems. I'm used to this car in the long drive, actually, how it drives, so I'm a bit thrown off by it. Long drive, if you hit the front too hard, you do front flips. Hopefully, that's not going to be the same here. Okay, we're doing better for speed on this lap. 112 is the average. We still have some good grip, actually. Light bunk. This car can do good, I just need to get that first tight turn down properly. It's just, just the right amount of slide to kick it out and get the checkpoint. I like that.
I'm thinking I need to shift up sooner than where I am. Because, like, I don't think I have actually that much top end. Because I have turbos. Speed is among the average, once again. No tree visiting. Well, maybe a little bit. Branch visiting at most. Small bunk again. We're right there. The Plymouth is not going to get it. It did a good showing though. And it was quite enjoyable to drive. A 28.5 half a second down on that Challenger. Dang. Almost some good money. I mean, I'm still getting a lot of money for doing all these events. So. And I've already got like 70 million, so I can already buy any car I need. So do not to worry about my woes in the wheel of spin. All right, which Pontiac goes first? I say we go up the gears, so we're gonna go with the GTO first. In Horizon 4, this was a bit of a meta car because it could get uh, really good handling for uh, A-Class. It never got a lot of power, and that's true here. I don't think we're even supercharged, but you know, a fairly well handling car. Pretty high suspension. No race brakes. Alright. Let's have a gander. I do have the supercharger hood. I am supercharged. Okay. It's a noisy supercharger too. I like that. Do I need five gears? I do need five gears. God dang it. This car is a bit neutral steering, I'll be honest. That's less than ideal. I'd rather have a tiny bit of oversteer than neutral steer. And understeer, while it's controllable, it's just very slow. Six and a half thousand is all she's got. Do I need to shift up at all through the dirt though? I think I do, god dang it. All five gears need to be used all the time. Maybe except for up the hill. Actually, we do need to remember we have a long back end just like the old Impala. And we don't have good brakes. Now we do have full roll cage, so we should be fairly not terrible. When do I shift up is the question. Probably over the hump where I always shift up, to be fair. Bonk. Speed 
is better. It's 111 instead of like 108. That's good. We actually got over that rock very cleanly. Very slow through the water. Maybe this car needs more ride height. Better turn there. What? Impossible. I saw it move. It's moved. Impossible game. Impossible. That is some BS right there. Everyone saw it move. Oh, I, I guess the ghost can make a move too. God dang it. <laughs> I'm trying for every inch. And the car is so fat. I thought it would let me get it. Not this time though. Pontiac being done dirty this episode. Much better through the water that time, though, leaving it in fourth gear. My brakes still suck. Yep. GTO, I guess you need all-wheel drive to be meta. And maybe LS swap. Well, GTO, good car. It actually handled okay. I just sucked. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'm really getting tired of seeing the Mustang here. Problem is, there's not that many cars left to even challenge it. I could do that car. I haven't done that car yet. Can I, any of these have the... I guess so. I could do those in the future. Emery Porsche. That could be a fun one. But that's not what we're here for. Last car for today has a spooky number for its torque. 666. This car is so good in low classes like D and C class. But in B class, I'm not sure how competitive it'll be. It's kind of similar to uh, the old Camaro that we were driving before. That got a stupid number of torque as well with twin turbo upgrades. How will this one do? This is one I love to drive in low classes like D and B class. I don't drive it often in B class though. I think this is one of the earlier tunes I did, so that's why the tune needed some adjustments. We're ready to go, though. Problem with the turbo setup, and one with this much torque, is that it's all built up at like 3,000 RPM, and how often are we at 3,000 RPM? 
I can leave it in fifth for the whole time and probably be okay. But that won't be fast. One thing this card does have going for it is it is heavy. So it shouldn't get thrown around too much. And the grip it has is all there. Do I need to shift up? I can go above 6,000. I'm gonna try not to shift up for the dirt section. 110 on the first run, not awful. Good turn there, actually. I will need fifth gear for the road. I do have decent grip, actually. We're actually not too, like, far behind the Challenger here. In fact, the Challenger goes wide, so I can actually make up some ground here. We're pretty even. I just don't have as much top speed because it's lighter than me. Through the water, I'm better. I'm catching up up the hill. Oh, yes! We are finally going to have a new uh, ghost to go up against. We do have one more lap to go. Can I improve my time? I'm not too sure. That was a pretty good run. It's mostly all about not going wide there like the Challenger does. Hello. Well, that's the first time we've hit the tree in a while. We have a new leaderboard time to go up against in the Pontiac Firebird. So no longer is Dodge on top there, but of course Ford, the lingering demon with the 666 torque, we couldn't beat that. <laughs> uh, we couldn't beat our 666 torque. Pontiac here, get it to the top. Oh well, that's it for this episode. If you guys are up for more Pontiacs trying to take down the Ford next time out, you can leave a like. Favorite, comment, share, and of course, don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks, Gambia. I'll see you all in the future.